Nice to be back. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> I'm, I'm nervous. <coughs> um, who got family here? Yeah? How big is your family? There's, there's, there's something amazing, wonderful about a family, right? We heard families that are dysfunctional or, you know, having all these issues and stuff like that. But at the end of the road, it's always good. It's wonderful to have a family. Amen? Amen. Amen. Me and Susan will always get excited when, uh, when we plan to visit our family in, in, in San Francisco. It always gets us excited. Like, you know, a week or a month before we talk about it, and then I, I'm going to start, you know, uh, spending my nights up just thinking, of that plan, right? Have you guys, have you guys, so the excitement is there. And for you who have relatives not here, around here, probably other town or overseas or local, every time you go and plan and visit them, you're excited to see them, right? Yeah. Are you? I'm not sure about that, but yeah? <laughs> you're excited to see them, right? Yeah. Like you're going to have like a small reunion. Yeah. And that's the same feeling, beloved, that I, myself, and Susan have today. We are so excited to be here because knowing that we have our family here. Am I right with that? Yes? Yes? Well, I, I trust that we all had a wonderful celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ last week. Yes? Amen? Who were here last week? Were you guys blessed? Amen? Amen? Yes, of course. Amen? But you know what? Let me ask you, what's next after Easter? What's next to the disciples of Jesus Christ after they found out that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? What's after to you and me after we heard the news and receive and believe the news that He has risen? What's next to that? Today, we will look to uh, the story of what happened after the resurrection of Christ. I would like to invite everyone to please rise. In honor of the reading of the word, I want to, us to read this all together. Our text is taken from John 20, 19 to 23. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he, heard, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And we, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Please remain standing as we look up to the Lord in prayer. Father, we honor you today. We bless your holy name and we thank you for the liberty we have here just to come together to worship you and hear from you. Lord, we commit this time to you. And as we listen to your living word, give us wisdom and understanding. Lord, don't let us to leave this place unchanged. But allow, allow us to rest in your presence today. Father, we glorify your name in our midst as we listen to your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. The title of our message for today is, What Jesus Brings. What Jesus Brings. I believe that today's message will not only encourage us in our personal walk with the Lord, but will also empower us to live our lives in victory we have in Christ. Are you guys excited for that? Amen, amen. You know, speaking of excite, being excited, there's always great excitement among people every time a new leader assumes leadership position. Like, for instance, in sports, they get a new coach. All the players, you know, they're excited about their new coach. What's he going to do? Will he lead us to championship or to just the semis, you know? Or, or, you know, in business world, if they have a, a new CEO, they look forward to, you know, what's going to happen. 
They're excited. Even, even, even in churches, when God installed new lead pastors, people are excited about it. Amen? Amen. But, but I think the excitement among men is even greater during election season. Don't you think so? Because of the greater scope. You know? People are excited. They get excited. Who, 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 who's going to get win? Who's going to, you know, get to be our next president? Will it be my candidate or, you know? You know, like, like in the Philippines, every, every, every election season, everyone's excited. They were excited about President Duterte, if you guys know. Have you heard of President Duterte? Yes? Yes? The, everyone was excited about what he can do for the country, especially during the, their campaign season. You know, I will change this, I will change that, and I will, choose, I will do this, you know. Same thing, I guess, with uh, President uh, uh, Donald Trump, right? Hey, this guy. Right? Everyone is excited. But guess what? 20, 24, uh, 21 months after the reign of, or, of President Duterte, you know, can you imagine? In the last 21 months as president, there were almost oh, actually over 20,000 deaths on account of his war against drugs. 20,000, over 20,000 deaths in the last 21 months. That's almost averaging almost 1,000 deaths a month. That's a lot of dead bodies. Well, it's a good business for the funeral parlor, no? But I mean, you know, now from, from, from uh, excitement, the, the people started to shift their feelings to Worries to being worried to be being fearful. Like I think for 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 some also they uh, they were excited about President Donald Trump, and but now they have he has worked on the the tax reform, uh, medical insurance reform, and that what's that the, the wall of China? Uh, no, like you know. Now people their their excitement has changed, shifting from excitement to fear. Won't you agree? Yes. Well, that's, that's the common thing about these two presidents, you know, because of their radical approach to change. But it's kind of ironic that while new leaders can bring fear to their people, fear is also experienced by many because they lost a leader. Because they lost a leader. And that's the case of the disciples after their leader, their master, their Lord has been taken by Roman soldiers, flogged, punished, crucified, you know, punished by the, you know, the most shameful way of death, namely crucifixion. You know, earlier in the passage, you, we, will, we can see, if, if you just go back to that, uh, that early in the morning, Mary Magdalene was there. But he found the, 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 the stone rolled up already, so she went back to Peter and John, reported the story. So these two guys went and running to the tomb. And lo and behold, the body of Christ was not there. Only the fold, folded linen, right, cloth, right? So they went back to their place. That same day, that same night, we can find in our text that on that Sunday evening, the disciples locked themselves up for what reason? For fear of the Jews. But I think, you know what, it, it's just. Their fear, being fearful is just and reasonable. Reasonable enough, right? They, they, they got their master, you know, their master got killed and murdered and crucified, buried. And now the body is missing. You know, they're fearful because they're thinking that this, <clears throat> this, this Roman soldiers or this re even religious leaders of their time must be looking for them next. You guys follow? Yeah. So uh, I, I, can, I can imagine, you know, it's fearful thing to be in that situation. So they were wanted probably thinking that, you know what, let's just stay here. We d let's just stay here. So today we will look into four different things that Jesus brings to his disciples in the middle of all this. 
in the middle of all this. And number one, Jesus brings peace. Jesus brings peace. Wait, Pastor Edwin. I thought Jesus said he didn't bring peace. No, he did. But yes, you're right too. You have that in mind. You see, Matthew 10, 34 says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace. This is Jesus. I do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. That's right. Jesus didn't come to bring peace to the earth. There will be division between families, friends, relatives, right? There will be division because not everyone will come to faith in Christ. Division. Division. But let me, let me tell you this. Jesus didn't come to bring peace to the earth. But Jesus definitely brings peace to those he calls his own. You guys agree? Remember, remember one day on this situation. Imagine we have... We who are part of the men's ministry here, or a, a, any ministry, <laughs> women's ministry. Okay, how about this? Let's let's take another illustration. Who among you have relatives who passed away already? Yeah, you're the you're the first generation. No one. There is oh wait, you know, recently any recently yes. What will you feel? You're, you're, you're having a dinner. You're having a dinner in your house. Candlelights, right? Sweet. And then after, all of a sudden appeared that relative of yours. What would you feel? <gasps> right? You're not going to ask him, what are you doing here? <laughs> no, you're, not, you're, you're probably going to run, right? My goodness. That is something unusual. A person who was dead and now out of nowhere came and stood among them. That's the scenario where the, the disciples were together, right? You know, how would you react if, if you were with them? Or if you were in their place, you know? I think, I, I can only imagine they must be in shock. And with much greater fear. But you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ brings peace. Peace be with you. Now, listen to this. The peace that the Lord gives is different from what the world gives and how people define peace. He says in John 14, 27, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. The, the peace of the Lord is some kind of peace that quiets our troubled hearts. It's the kind of peace that overcomes fear. That overcomes fear. Now let me ask you, what are the things in your life right now that you fear of? Wives are not included. <laughs> or husband. Sickness, losing a job, or maybe you're, you have fear of darkness. Or when you see your bank account, it's dropping by, the, the number are dropping, right? You become fearful. Or are you fearful about the prediction of the big one, the big hit here in California? Are you ready about that? Are you ready for that? Like, two weeks ago, we, 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 we experienced that, right? Yes? The little shaking, 5.3, I guess, or 5.2. What did you do, guys, during that moment? I know somebody who, who said, in Jesus' name, and the earthquake stopped. Hallelujah. I remember one, day, one, one prayer meeting here. I remember Pastor Lester, we were having a, a prayer meeting, right? And then all of a sudden, oh, shh. And what he did? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And others were like, oh, my goodness. But he was excited because, you know, you didn't know. You'll never know. You know, that maybe that's, he was excited. And I think it's a very nice gesture, a nice thing to remember. Every time the earth shakes, 
do that. I'll make sure you can do this and then hallelujah, right? Hallelujah. Well, you know, the list of our fear to go and go on and on and on. How about the fear of sharing the gospel? How about the fear of being persecuted because of your faith? How about the fear of being rejected when you share Christ? Where do you find peace when your heart is troubled? When your heart is fearful? Well, look no, for, no further, beloved. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus, for He brings His peace to quiet our hearts and to overcome our fears. I know, I, I love what Jesus did the next. See, when He had said this, He showed them His hands and His side. Wow, I think that's, that's wonderful. Let's pause for a minute on that. Why do you think Jesus did that? Why would he show them his pierced hands and his sides? To prove that it was him, right? You know what? I, I, I'm he. I'm he who they, 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 they tortured, they crucified, they buried. It's me. Hey, guys, it's me, Right? But you know what? What else? I firmly believe that there is more to it than just telling them, hey, it's me. Look. You know? I, he showed these wounds. Listen to this. He showed these wounds to his disciples to tell them that pains, afflictions, and sufferings are real. They are real. But most importantly, he showed his wounds to his disciples to tell them that in spite of the reality of pain, of affliction, of suffering, and even humiliation that he had to go through, he endured them all. He endured them all. He was like saying, you know what, yes, they killed me, they buried me, they crucified me, they buried me, but look, I have risen. It's like him saying, I have overcome sin, death, and the grave. We sang it earlier. Death has no hold of Christ. No way, Jose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was like saying, yes, the penalty that I paid for your sins cost me this much, this much, this much, this much. But you know what? My love for you is far greater than all this. Hallelujah. 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 You remember one, on one occasion when Jesus was speaking to his disciples about his impending death. This is what he told them in, in John 16.33. The, the, the apostles were, were starting to worry about, you know, about him leaving them. Because he's been, he started talking about his death. So here he, say, he was saying that in this world, because it is a fallen world, we will have tribulation, we will experience persecutions, we will face troubles. Why? Because these things are real. These things are real. But he's saying at the same time, but take heart. Our Lord Jesus Christ has already overcome the world. Hallelujah. And as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we can find peace. We can find peace in Him because He already won the battle. Even long before even it even started. Do you guys believe that? Yes, yes. Man, this is chapter 16 of John. What chapter can you find where He was crucified? 19. Right? 19. Before even he was taken to Pilate, to Herod, to everyone. Before even he was flogged, he already overcome it. Before even he was crucified, he already overcome it. Before even he died on the cross, he already overcome it. Even before he, he was buried, he was already overcome it. Wow. Beloved, so don't let your heart be troubled. Nor be fearful, but let the peace of Christ, let the peace of the Lord rule in your hearts. Jesus brings His peace to God's people whom 
he is pleased and this is the reason why every Christian why the people sitting next to you is, can find peace in every situation of life in every situation of life now we need to understand beloved that this true peace not that the world gives is not experienced by everyone let, repeat, let me repeat that this true peace that comes from Jesus is not experienced by everyone but only those whom God is pleased you guys believe that remember when when Christ was born and there appeared an angel of the Lord with the multitude of angels in front of the shepherd in the account of Luke we can hear we can read this one it says glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased not for everyone it is offered to everyone Paul underlined this in his letter to Romans it says therefore since we have been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ alone if you guys are looking for peace this is, there's no other or better peace that we can have than peace with God. And peace with God can only be found in Christ, through Him. Amen? Amen? You know what? And even before Paul said this, the prophet Isaiah already explained or, or, or defined what kind of peace one would experience. One that trusts the Lord, one who puts his mind on the Lord. In Isaiah 26, 3, this is what it says. You keep him, God keep him in perfect peace. Perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. He trusts in you. Are you troubled, beloved? Are you fearful? Maybe it's time to trust the Lord. Maybe it's time to focus your eyes to Jesus says there those mind is stayed on you and who he who trusts in you you keep him in perfect peace wow and this is what jesus brings to those who trust him a true dimension or even the whisper of your name we sang it earlier right the name of jesus he will silence the wind he will silence the waves in our lives you guys believe that? Yes. So sing that often. Even more, right? Jesus, Jesus. Now we go to number two. Not only that Jesus brings peace but God's, to God's people, but also Jesus brings pleasure. Let me repeat this again. Pleasure, not pressure. Huh? <laughs> I don't want to, you know, miss it. Not pressure, pleasure. Pleasure. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. See, Wikipedia defines the word pleasure as a feeling of happy satisfaction or enjoyment, happiness, joy, satisfaction, gladness, contentment. Please note that the disciples first saw the pierced hands in the sight of the Lord. I think that is some, it's a factor that they were joyful. No, because they are thankful. Thankful to what God has done and that Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen? And so, seeing their master, their Lord, brought them great pleasure. I can totally relate to that um, reunion, that great reunion between the Lord and his disciples. Back in 1995, I, 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 that's the first time I went to Saudi Arabia to work away from my family and it's not easy it's not easy if you're i think if you're a bachelor you can go anywhere and then you wor you worry less but with you, when you are married and you have fa your your own family it's so difficult to work away from them so susan and we had two boys already by then and one is in the tummy her, her tummy by then so I, I left saudi arabia i left for saudi arabia and then I prayed to the Lord. Lord, I can't take this anymore. Lord, please bring them to me here or 
I just stay in the Philippines. Then lo and behold, God is good. God answers prayers. Amen? Amen. 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 July 23, 1997, they came to Riyadh International Airport in Saudi Arabia to be with me. And that day, whew, glorious day for me. I felt satisfied. I felt contented. I, I, I think I, felt, I experienced far greater than happiness. I experienced joy. I experienced joy. But you know what? I think, I think that that was just a shadow of pleasure in comparison to the joy and experience of the apostles, of the disciples. Well, I, because I can, I, I can be assured at least that I know that they are in the Philippines if they were not able to come, right? But this, in the case of the disciples, they were thinking and saying to themselves, you know what, you're not going to see him again. It's over, final, finish. So when they met with the Lord again, Wow, reunited with the Lord again. It brought them great pleasure. The very presence of the Lord brings them great pleasure. Not pressure, pleasure. Say to the person next to you, pleasure, not pressure. You know, it sounds like. It means different thing, okay? Careful. Well, the psalmist fully understand how it is to be in the presence of the Lord. In Psalm 16, Psalm 16, 11, this is what it says. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The psalmist even wrote it in another passion in, in, in Psalm 84, 10. I think we sang this also today. It says there, for a day in your court is better than a thousand elsewhere. One day in the house of God is better than a thousand days in the world. We sang it earlier. You guys, were you guys here during worship? Oof, the spirit was overwhelming me. Overwhelming. I can't stop crying because of the glory we have in this sanctuary brought by the very presence of God. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, the church is kind of hub where believers come together to connect with one another and to connect to God. It's kind of hub. You guys follow what I'm saying? Yeah. To connect to one another. You don't come to church and just sit on one corner and talk to yourself. No. <laughs> it's a hub. We connect to each other and we connect to the Lord. Amen. It's a place where God outpours or pour out His blessing, healing, restoration, strength, encouragement, hope. Do you experience this when you come to church? Yes? Can I hear amen? amen? That's why coming to church should be a delight. Great delight to each one of us. We should be, we should be all excited coming to church. Yes? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Excited. Excited. May it be for the prayer meeting on Wednesday, or may it be for a practice of worship, or Sunday worship. It is a thing that we should be delighted about. Are you guys following this? Yes. And excited. Are you excited this morning? Yes. What does it mean to be excited? Tell me. Well, Pastor, you know, I'm excited. I'm that, that excited to come to church. Just on Saturday evening, I already press the clothes that I'm going to wear tomorrow. I'm that excited, Pastor, that Saturday or even the day when you receive my check, I already cut my tithes and offerings. I don't need to wait till Sunday to have that ready. That's being excited. Being excited is to set your alarm and make sure you don't come late. That's excited. Coming to church is, should be a delight to us. If you are a lover of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now this is, this is something to think about. I trust that we enjoy the presence of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit while we experience Christ as we fellowship with one another. Right? Now, Beloved, we should be experiencing this when we come every time to come 
to church. And when we don't feel that, when we don't experience that, then there's something wrong. You want to ask yourself, you want to ask yourself, am I, am I closely looking and listening to Jesus when I come here every Sunday? Do I look forward to hearing the voice of the Lord? Or do I really expect to encounter Jesus today? That should be the compelling factor that we are here. We get excited because we know we're going to hear from the Lord. We're excited to come to church because we know we're going to see Him. We're going to meet Him. We're going to experience Him. We're going to encounter Jesus Christ. That's more than enough to be excited about church. Amen? Amen. Or do you, do you just come to fellowship? Now listen to this. This is our name. We love fellowship. But where is fellowship in the place of PCF? It goes at the end. Praise. Praise first. And then Christ. Because I am nothing. Praise Christ. I am nothing. And then we fellowship. Yes. Fellowship is the overflow of the love of Christ. Because we worship Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we should always be like that. You know, just like the disciples. The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. When they saw the Lord. Now, not only that. Number three. Jesus brings purpose. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Now, this is something we need to understand about the, the God that we serve, about the God that we worship, about the God that we say we love. You know, our God, even, even in the Old and the New Testament, describes Him as a God-sending missionary. God-sending missionary. Do you guys believe that? We can read from Old Testament to the New. Now, the Lord calls people to Himself. Moses. So he can send him, right? He called Abraham to himself so he can send him. Isaiah and other prophets, right? Even Paul, the apostles, he called him to himself so that he can send them, right? So it's like first come, then serve. First come, then serve. First come, then serve. Even Isaiah, we can hear from Isaiah. This is a prophecy by Prophet Isaiah speaking of the promised Messiah. It says there, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. You see, during those times, Jesus won Sabbath stood in front and opened the roll. It's a scroll, right? Opened the scroll and he wrote, he, he, he read this passage from Isaiah and after reading, he proclaimed, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. That is to say that God the Father, God the Father sent His only Son for this very purpose. To bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. And on our passage today, Jesus sends His disciples, He says, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. This is like saying, I am sending you with my purpose. I am sending you with my purpose. Not only, not only to the disciples He met that night, but to every one of us. That's me, that's you, and the person next to you. Can you again turn, please, to the person next to you and tell him or her, Jesus is sending you with his purpose. Not your purpose, but his purpose. Amen. Now listen to this. Jesus didn't plan to send his disciples just on their own. On their own. He said, 
Peace be with you. He sent them with his peace. He sent them with his peace. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. So, Jesus brings peace. Jesus brings pressure. Pleasure. Pleasure. And Jesus brings purpose. And for the best part, Jesus brings power. Power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need power. We all need that. Amen? And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the baptizer. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, this is interesting. The Greek word for breathe that was used here was the same meaning of the Hebrew word used in Genesis 2.7. Genesis 2.7 says, Then the Lord formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils and the breath of life. And he become, became a living creature. Jesus breathing on his disciples is the same as Jesus giving them life. Giving them new life in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And to live a life in the Spirit of God is power. Power. Jesus in one of his discourses with his, his disciples. He told them in John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you few things. All things. And bring to your remembrance some that, oh, all that I said to you. Wow. To me, that is power. Yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah. To know everything, to remember everything that he taught, that is power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who remember what Pastor Courtney preached last week? Well, let me remember. <laughs> what happened to the power? The baptism of Uriel, water of revival. Jesus is risen, right? And raised up before all. To be all in all. He was raised up over all to feel all in all. He was raised up to call all. To redeem all in all. Power. Hello. Power to remember. Power to remember. Use your bulletins, beloved. Read right on them. And then don't just stick it in your Bible. Come home, meditate on it. Use it to your Bible studies. These are precious words the preachers prepared and invested their hearts, their souls in preparation for that. For our benefit. Take advantage of it, beloved. Amen? Amen? So remember that the moment we receive Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit started to dwell in our hearts. You guys believe that? The Holy Spirit started to dwell in our hearts to work in and through us. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will guide us, will help us to be our helper in our spiritual walk with God. As we accomplish the purpose He has set us to go. Amen. In other words, we cannot simply do it on our own. We cannot just go on our own. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power that Jesus brings through the Holy Spirit. So let us all be excited about that, beloved. God, listen to this. God is not yet done with us. And so let us let God shape us to the person He called us to be, according to the image of His Son. Let the power that Jesus brings, who is the Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and influence our lives. Uh, earlier today, uh, during the break, we were having a, a discovery in the worship team room, and uh, one of the I think it's Pastor D, Pastor Daniel, who shared the peace that we experience, the pleasure that we have, the, the, the purpose and the power that we receive from Christ. 
that could be influential to others. We can be contagious to others. Let it overflow in our lives. Let it overflow in our lives. So as a recap, what Jesus brings to the life of every believer and follower of Jesus Christ, peace that overcomes fear, pleasure, not pressure, in the presence of the Lord, purpose to bless and draw people to God, and power in the Holy Spirit. Jesus brings peace, pleasure, purpose, and power. And then our last verse says, If you forgive the sins of many, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withhold. And you know what? Jesus explicitly stated this, the purpose of His coming in Luke. He says in 532, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners too. That's one of the purposes God the Father sent His Son for. Yeah. The true repentance produces forgiveness and reconciliation with God. That is the same purpose, beloved, that Jesus has given His disciples. And Jesus is giving to us, has given to us, every one of us, the same purpose. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. So verse 23 is kind of like Jesus gives us the key to God's forgiveness. In other words, God's forgiveness will be given those whom we will bring at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you guys follow? Fulfilling the purpose God has given you. Give the good news. Proclaim the good news. Heal the, heal the brokenhearted. And, you know, set the captives free. Who can do that? We cannot do that. But Jesus can. Jesus can. Right? You know, I love, I love one of the lyrics and one of the songs that we sang today. Jesus brought heaven down for us. Jesus brought heaven down for us. Complete package. Peace, pleasure, purpose, and power. Amen? Amen? I always say this to our congregation. As believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we are to live our lives in victory. We are to live our lives in victory that we have in our Savior. Jesus has overcome sin and death. He's done with that. He is alive. He is risen. The resurrection life should live on in our lives. It li should live on in our lives. Amen? Amen? That includes you and me. I'm not saying that we will be free of, you know, of so many hardships and trials and affliction and troubles in this life. They are real. But you know what? The Lord says, trouble not your heart. I've already won. I've already won. Man, whose side are you in? If you are in Jesus, in Team Jesus, you've already on one, right? Amen. Well, that's the good news for today. So let us acknowledge and receive the peace that Jesus brings, the pleasure that Jesus brings, the purpose that Jesus brings, and the power that Jesus brings, and live for the praise and glory of His name. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for. For, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, Lord, we thank you for the victory that you have given us in Christ. For he has overcome everything, Lord. Sin, death, grave, all the troubles, of the, all the afflictions, the trials. And Lord, we know that we can also be victorious in every, in every part of our lives in this world. Lord, for we are in Christ. And in Christ, we are more than conquerors, oh God. Lord, thank you for, for your gift of peace. For your gift of pleasure, your purpose that you have given us. Most importantly, for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, allow us to reflect all these things in our lives. To influence others. To reflect to others your goodness. Thank you, Lord. And we receive that. We receive that today, O oh Lord, in our lives. Help us and make us blessings to other people, O oh Lord, that also we also bring them the peace that we have received, the pleasure that we have received, the purpose that we have in you, and the power that we receive from you. Thank you. Continue to bless this family of believers, of PCF. Continue to bless every family represented in this church and every one of us, Lord. Glorify your name.
Thank you so much. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.